Louisiana is known for its legend and lore, making it a muse to many artists, musicians, and writers. To promote and preserve the state's scribes and literary legacy, Louisiana established a Poet Laureate program. Meet Louisiana's latest Poet Laureate, Mona Lisa Saloy, and she's on a mission to inspire future writers, memory keepers, and cultural ambassadors. Oh, poop a doo. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You know they call me the most. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And I won't stop trying till I create a disturbance in your mind. Mona Lisa Saloy speaks in a melodic cadence of Creole, a language and a dialect that forms the fabric of her being, her culture, and her community. As Louisiana's Poet Laureate, Mona Lisa travels the state, giving a voice to her cultural experiences through public readings of her poetry. Why I capture that Black Creole talk, which is very unique, very sweet to the ear, it is music to our ears. When we say, hey now, we mean it. <laughs> Where you at? We mean it. And there's a lot more than that. So our voices, not just Chicago, not just New York or Brooklyn, not just DC, but New Orleans. It's great music, great food, but we have a flair for language. And it is, Creole is a language, but we also have dialects that are precious and we have a lot of sayings, and I try to capture those voices. The Louisiana Poet Laureate program um, allows communities across the state to bring the Poet Laureate to their town and typically do a reading or a lecture or a workshop with people who are interested in poetry or maybe people who want to know more about poetry. The Louisiana Endowment for Humanities oversees the nomination process for the State Poet Laureate Program, which the legislature established in 1942. It's a great honor, and I'm so grateful for that. But my chief role is to encourage people to tell their stories in poetry and however they tell it. And I really want people to interview their elders right now, today. Interview your parents, talk to them. The governor picks the Poet Laureate to serve a two-year term from a nomination committee's top recommendations. The Louisiana Endowment for Humanities helps orchestrate the Poet Laureate's public events and programs. It really is about exploring what makes us human. And you do that by talking to other people about their experiences, how they differ, how they relate. That happens through the Poet Laureate program. Um, and Mona Lisa in particular has taken up just about every offer she's received. She's traveled the state tirelessly over the past two years. Chronicling and celebrating Creole culture is Mona Lisa's life work as a poet and a folklorist, which has attracted the attention of U.S. presidents, publishers, and notable literary peers. She writes in her upstairs library, lined with shelves of books she has collected and curated over the years. Among them, her first collection of poetry published in 2005. My first book, Red Beans and Russ of Yours, was documenting Black Creole culture before Hurricane Katrina. And that was a combination of pieces that grew up from the voices of my family, my father, my mother, my sister, and my uncles. They just had so much everything for me. So that was us before Katrina, and then Katrina happened, and so many of us lost everything as I did. Mona Lisa's muse is the New Orleans community where she grew up. She lives on the site of her childhood home, devastated by Hurricane Katrina, like so many others in her neighborhood. We had nine and a half feet of water right here, so 5,000 books drowned, my research that wasn't published, pictures, all the family pictures. She rebuilt on the site, elevating her new home with front and back porches, perched above the street level with a bird's eye view of the people and places that inform and inspire her work. The Louisiana Poet Laureate also teaches English as an endowed professor at Dillard University and is co-authoring a novel. The literature I read was mostly dead white people. <laughs> Great literature. But it wasn't my reflection. So black literature wasn't taught, it wasn't promoted. And I still said, well, where's my neighborhood? Where's my seventh ward, downtown, downriver folks? Our neighbors, our community, our characters. 
who are unequal and talented. So I was always talking back to the greats. And when Nikki Giovanni says, all the while we were quite happy, I was trying to capture that happiness because we had very little, but we had each other. And there was so much joy in that togetherness. This state of legend and lore has inspired many literary greats that the Poet Laureate program seeks to preserve and promote. A new LPB documentary chronicles the state's scribes profiling Southern storytellers in literature, music, television, and film. Meanwhile, Mona Lisa, well, she's tirelessly traveling the state, inspiring the next generation of Louisiana storytellers, memory keepers, and cultural ambassadors. So as Poet Laureate, it's important for me to go to communities and they get a taste of who we are here in New Orleans, and I encourage them to tell their stories and document their traditions so that we have not just my poetry, and we are blessed with great writers here, so many. So I'm honored to be a part, to be in that number, as we say. <laughs> You can meet Mona Lisa Saloy and hear her recite poetry Saturday, July 15th as part of LPB's Spinning Yarn event. Now, it's held at the East Baton Rouge Parish Main Library from 3 to 5 p.m. Saloy joins other notable Louisiana storytellers for the event, which is free and open to the public. Also during that time, children are invited to attend Ziggy's Arts Adventure with Storytelling at the library from 3 to 4 p.m., featuring puppet star Ziggy and friends who will share Louisiana's stories and songs. And the national premiere of the PBS series Southern Storytellers airs on LPB Tuesday, July 18th, and you do not want to miss it.